Well, in this TETCAST, we want to take a look at the uh, hypothesis test involving dependent samples and two means involved. So we want to take a look at inferences about two means with dependent samples. So by dependent samples, we mean that the two samples involved are related in some sort of way. Uh, so what we want to do here is to compute the differences of the ordered pairs, so to speak, uh, of the samples, and then perform a t-test to see if uh, we have a statistically significant difference between the means of those samples. So let's take a look at an example here and see uh, how we can do that. So uh, in, in this example it says the Washington State Department of Transportation constructed two-way left turn lanes in 11 intersections and recorded the number of collisions per year two years before and after construction. And you see the results there in our table. And um, here's the question then. At a 10% level of significance, test the claim that the collisions per year were greater before the construction of the two-way left turn lanes. So notice here, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the, the data decreased, meaning there were fewer accidents after the construction. Sometimes it actually increased. And so what we want to know is, on the whole, is there a, uh, were the collisions greater before the construction than afterwards? So let's go ahead and form the hypotheses for this test. Now remember, we're taking a look at the hypothesis of means. So the null hypothesis would, there, would be that there would be no statistically significant change in the differences. So uh, h sub 0 is mu sub d, that's the mean of the differences, is equal to 0. Then the alternative hypothesis, in, in this case that's our claim, that the difference uh, between the two sets of data is greater than 0. In other words, another way to put that is the mean of the first set of data is greater than the second. So let's go ahead and set everything up here. Um, so we have a right tail test with a 10% level of significance. In other words, alpha is 0 0.10. Degrees of freedom is the number of ordered pairs we have minus 1. So that'd be 11 minus 1 or 0 in this case. And so now we can just use the student's t distribution table. That'd be table A3 in your book to get the critical value of 1.372. The next step in order to compute the test statistic would be to find the mean of the differences and also the standard deviation of the differences. So we'll go to our calculator for that. Uh, I've taken the liberty of putting the data in list number one before the construction, list number two after the construction. Now we want to compute the differences in the ordered pairs. So to do that, I'll just scroll over and then go up to highlight L3 and then hit the enter key. And notice when I do that I get a cursor here down at the bottom of the um, screen that uh, says you can put in some kind of command to do a transformation on those two lists. So what I want to do is to take list number one and then subtract the data from list number two. So to do that we'll hit the second key and L1 and then minus the second key and L2, number two, to get L2 and then go ahead and hit enter. And then notice when we do that, we get the differences of the ordered pairs. So in other words, 0.7 minus 0.3 is 0.4, 1.2 minus 0.6 is 0.6, and so on. Notice some of the differences are negative, meaning that there were more crashes after the construction than before. So what we want to do now is to compute the mean and standard deviation of the data in list 3. So to do that, let me clear the screen. I'll hit second and quit. And then we'll go to our stat button. Go over to calc. And we want one variable statistics. So I'll, get, I'll hit enter. And now we want the one variable statistics on list three. So to do that, we'll hit the second key and then number three to get list three and then hit enter. So we see here that x bar, that's our mean, that represents the d bar for this test, the mean of the differences, and sx, that's our sample standard deviation. That's S sub D, the standard deviation of the differences for the test. So I went ahead and recorded those values. Let's take a look at that. So uh, rounding to two decimal places following the conventions in the text, we get D bar is 0.25, S sub D is 3.07. 
So from that, we can go ahead and compute our test statistic. Notice here, uh, recall the formula, it's T, the test statistic, is D bar minus M sub D divided by S sub D over the square root of N. N represents the number of ordered pairs. So in this case, we have 0.25, that's from uh, the mean of the data in L3, minus zero, that's the assumed difference from the null hypothesis. And then in the denominator, notice here, um, you have to put uh, both of the uh, uh, numerator denominator of the denominator here inside parentheses to make sure everything's well posed. Uh, so we get 3.07 divided by the square root of 11, so 0.27 is our test statistic. So knowing that, I went ahead and made a graph of the data and, and uh, for the t distribution. So notice here, uh, the red line represents our critical value 1.372 from the student's t distribution table. Our test statistic, uh, remember we had 0.27, that was from uh, rounding to two decimal places, that represents the blue line. So notice here, the blue line is not to the right of the red line where the critical region starts. So it looks like we do not reject the null hypothesis in this case. All right, blue line represents the test statistic. Red line is the border for the critical region on the right tail. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. Uh, so we don't reject the null hypothesis. The claim was the alternative hypothesis. So our conclusion here is that there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the, that the uh, collisions per year were greater before uh, construction of the two-way left turn lanes. Now let me show you one more thing uh, uh, in order to use your calculator to uh, get the test statistic. One thing we could do is to use the test capabilities of our calculator to compute the test statistic and we can also get the p-value this way. So to do that if we hit stat and then go over to tests we can go to option 2 for the t-test because that's what we're working here with the student's t distribution but now we have data so I'll go ahead and, and highlight data and hit enter and then we have to put a, uh, our place for the data so I'll go down here to list and that data is in list number three we have to tell the calculator where the data is so I'll just highlight that and we have a right tail test so we want to highlight the right tail and then we'll go ahead and hit calculate and notice here the Test statistic T is just what we calculated. Re again, rounding to two decimal places, that would be 0 0.27. Uh, the p-value is 0 0.39. So notice here that is not smaller than the level of significance. So that's another way we can show that we do not reject the null hypothesis. So you could also use this way to verify your answer using the t-test for these um, inferences when we have two means and dependent samples.